Okay, folks, it's time. I'm going to go ahead and fit my coat for the bosal, and I wanted to show you how I do it. And uh, something to bear in mind is Bruce Sandiford is doing a YouTube deal I saw, and uh, he's working a, pr a young horse. So what you have is an opportunity to see two different reinsmen do it two different ways. And I think that would be really good for everybody if you'll just find him and watch him because you're going to get a different story. And that's what I told you about originally. Everybody does this differently. So now I'm going to... When you go to work with your bosal, the first thing you want to do is turn your halter around. Then the nose band is pointed away and it makes it easier for you to work. It's out of your way. And I'll show you the fit that I want and why. Now I cut the bridle path because it helps keep the, the brow band in place. I mean, excuse me, the crown piece. The brow band stops it from going back too far. Now there's not a lot of pressure there, it's just basically hanging on them. So there's the throat latch. Now once again, just so you see it, the way my head stall is made, which a vaquero showed me a long time ago, it's not going to be here. It's always going to be here. Now riding outside like I do, going through the brush, it's not going to come off the head. With the brow band, it helps keep it level. Keeps everything in this indention in their skull here. Everything kind of stays flat. And it's a good it's a good square fit, I guess is what you say. Now, for me personally, the most important thing about a bosal is right here. Right there, that muscle. And what happens is that when I ride a hackamore horse, this moves. That's the signal. And that's how it works. If you'll watch the nose band, when I pick up on the heel knot, it rolls. And it rolls down about a quarter of an inch. That's right where the bone starts to turn to cartilage. So when I actually put pressure on it, it's on the cartilage. When I drop the heel, heel knot, it's on the bone. Okay? When I start riding this horse, I keep an eye on him. If I start to lose some hair somewhere, I can still adjust this in quarter inch increments. So now I'll put the macate and I'll show you how that works. Now somebody asked me about hobbling above and below the ankles. I hobble above the ankles because I'm too fat to bend down to do the below it and what I found out is once I've roped a horse and roped their feet then they're just fine I've never boat attended I've never done anything that you have to go to jail over the macate it's a 5 eighths I think it's mohair and we don't carry these. We get them from Jack at the D Bar M in, in uh, Reno. D Bar M uh, Western Store. Now, there again, you're about to watch this done one of many, many ways. This is what works for me. We have a plug in our, in our bosals. So it gives you a space between the two cheek pieces. And that helps me take the diameter of the makate. And now when I put the wrap on, 
I pull the distance of the rain that I need, which for me is about six feet on this horse. Okay, now once I've got the length of rain that I want, I can feel it that it's got a twist in it and I just take my fingers and straighten it out and then follow it down. Can you see that? Now it turns and turns up flat. Okay. So now my reins are set. I take the end of the makate and I just make a half hitch and put it over the whole thing. So now when I pull it down I in fact have one what I call a bar. This you'll see after I put it on is the concept of a hackamore for me. This is a lever. This is a signal. That's how I look at a hackamore. Now, crown piece, centered, brow band, centered. Now, with the makate on, you'll see the difference from when I didn't have it on and the reason why I do it the way I do it. Now this will adjust over time because of the stretch of everything. So the throat latch, here it is by there. Now you pull it back and it gets out of the way of the eye. I, I'm a real believer in my head stall because it's it just squares everything up and if you if you ride outside you'll understand over time why I, I'm so big on it. Okay, now I've got the leverage. If I pull back on this and it goes all the way to the bone, it turns into a lever. I've got this much room to make a hackamore horse. Right there. Right there. That's what's going to make the horse. Now, watch the nose band. You can see it move. For me, that's this is the way this horse will get rode for the next year. Okay, on the ground, you put life down the rein, one rein at a time, until the head moves. I'll need the left eye. That's good enough. Now the interesting thing about this colt is he knows there's something different going on. So I'm going to put life down the rein and ask. Please understand how sensitive an animal can be. Also, know that when you're on the ground it's a different world than when you're on their back. He's going to, his mind is going to change as soon as I get on his back. But this is the polite way to present myself to know that when I pick up this rein and put life in it, He's supposed to move his head. Never in his life has he had this on. So, this is how it's done for me. Bump, there goes the head. Now one of the things I hate to do 
is I hate leading a colt by a hackamore. I don't like it because I'm doing the opposite of what I'm trying so hard to get light. And it's, it's, it's just something I don't care for. So I try to get exactly to where I'm going and then get off. If I do have to lead them, I've showed you this before. It's an overhand knot. Now it's a bowlin. If you'll notice there's slack here, so now when I lead the horse, the pressure's on the on the rein, not on the hackamore. If you don't know a bowling, just look it up in your Boy Scout manual. So what is what is real is I'm gonna ride this colt. And then I'm going to put my halter on just as soon as I feel some kind of a brace coming in and I have the opportunity to get to my halter. I don't want to reprimand a horse in a bosal. I want to teach a horse in a bosal. If he gets all bowed in the neck and stiffened up and braced, then I'll put the halter back on and straighten it out. Then I'll put the bosal back on. And I know everybody's thinking, where I live you can't do it and my socks are too tight or whatever the problem is. I'm just telling you that I'm in a position where I can get my halter pretty quick. Now you can tie it on behind your saddle and you would never ever put it underneath the head stall, ever. So that's, a, that's, how, it, that's how the fitting goes and then next you'll be seeing videos of me riding him. Thank you. Okay.